Welcome back, everyone, to Nowhere. Thanks for joining us again. We are here for episode two, diving into Courage the Cowardly Dog, the TV show. Of course, we're going through this 90s nostalgia TV show, going through the episodes we already previously did, the first three. So now we're doing the next three episodes, which has two segments apiece in them. Joining me again is Steve from Voices from the Mausoleum. How are you doing, Steve? I'm doing good. Return the slab. I'm very happy we got to that episode today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Like, yeah, there's some fun episodes that have a lot of cool different things going on in this one. Like for real, like some interesting characters, like the the Shirley the Medium one was a really fun one. I like that one. So yeah. a lot of fun stuff to talk about in this episode. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Can't wait to dive in. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. So for sure. So should we just get right into it and get into the first episode and Heck everything? Yeah. yeah. So let's do it. Let's pull that up real quick because we got all the episodes down here we got the duck brothers is our next episode and controlled by a pair of alien siblings muriel attempts to break into a military compound to rescue the duck's third brother having freed her for, freed her from their grasp courage confronts the aliens and offers them another solution so courage always coming in the clutch you know coming up with some other kind of solution we already talked about that it happens a lot so how did you feel about this one steve this was a funny one. Um, I, I, you know, <laughs> I love sort of the the, the ducks um, quasi Beatles esque accents. <laughs> yeah, it reminded me a lot of like yeah, like the Beatles. I kind of like the walk hard. You know, like the way they make fun of the Beatles and that accent, it very much mimics that tone. <laughs> like very like droll sort of like Liverpool accent. <laughs> Kind of thing yeah. that they do. I don't even. I can't even do it. <laughs> I sounded southern <laughs> just now trying to do it. Um, yeah. Well, no, but it's so funny. I was like, is that? You know, I actually when I was doing the research, I guess it's a common misconception that people think Ringo Starr did a voice for one of the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious wow yes yeah that must have been just a thing they went for for sure and i like the uh, did voice acting so that is true i think so yeah <laughs> yeah because he was part of wasn't he part of thomas the train and wow like, damn that's old school yeah thomas the train yeah old, i mean yeah yeah i mean we're talking 67 <laughs> but i think even beyond that he did some kids tv yeah so uh, no, this was, no, what did you think Oh, I was going to say, this one definitely plays more into, like, I guess the comedy aspect is definitely comedy heavy mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I like the, like, when Mario gets, you know, abducted in the beginning, just that whole alien abduction thing of her floating out the window, you know, Courage's reaction and stuff as she gets sucked up in there and she gets, she comes back with that, like, silly, like, little helmet on to mind control her and everything. <laughs> yeah, is this, like, our first allusion to, like, alien abductions? And I don't think we've had... An yeah, alien sort of so. situation yet, right? Yeah, because the pilot episode doesn't count. That was the only other one, I believe, the pilot episode that has a the alien chicken or something like that that's in it, that one. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That wasn't on TV yet. So I guess this yeah. sort of beats it in terms of people being able to see it. Because the yeah. pilot, I think, was included like in a video later on, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I loved it. I think that the brothers, I just the running gag of like, I don't know why they were so hung up on. It's weird for brother ducks or, to uh, lay eggs. I don't know why they were so like, <laughs> we don't lay eggs, but then they lay eggs. Oh yeah, they're like it was like yeah, they're just ashamed of it or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of funny little illusions here, um, including um, some rock'em sock'em robot fighting. Oh, for real, that was like. <laughs> That running gag was kind of funny for like in the head, the length of the necks and stuff like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But uh, yeah, uh, trying to go through. This was also the first episode to air in 2000. So no, I... funny enough, like we, I know we associate cards with the 90s, but most of the season I think aired in 2000. Um, yeah. You know, interestingly enough. Uh, what else? They had, um, they used similar sound effects to the Three Stooges. Um, so there's some allusions there. Um, and then they quote um, John Paul Jones, um, which I guess is a line that they use later on in the show. But um, yeah, so some fun, fun little things. Not a lot of outright horror references as much as we got in like the last batch of episodes in terms of like direct like movie references. Um, yeah. But still fun enough. 
Oh yeah, fun little like kind of things that you get to look up and dig up and everything, those little tidbits and stuff like that. And you like said it has a very vaudeville almost you know old school slapsticky nature to it the comedy in this episode for sure <laughs> yeah yeah what did you think of the the style in this one i know every episode sort of has its own unique you know the animation style generally the same give or take you know some characters are done differently um but what did you think about the look of this one this one i didn't think this one had like a creepy vibe to it or anything i think right off the bat this one had a different nature to it like i said the, the most creepiest thing was probably muriel getting you know mm -hmm. abducted in the beginning but besides that it very much was a m much more comfortable comical you know way about it yeah and i also th thought it was just really funny like courage's um solution because yeah we find out that like their whole thing is they're just abducting muriel right to like get their brother out of this compound and then courage's whole solution is i'm gonna just pretend to have this thing on my head and just grab the duck and run <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> which i think is really funny juxtaposing like you know these brother these duck brothers are coming up with like this convoluted thing all right we're gonna abduct a human make mind control them make them break in get our brother back and Kurt's just like i'm just gonna go get the duck <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he busts in pretty pretty hardcore too like freaking gets in there like mission impossible style or like not even like you know, sneaking, but just bust in hardcore. <laughs> like, so. I'm, just like, yeah, I'm just coming in and like, you know, surprise the cook and be like, okay, just <laughs> grab him and run. The cook's <laughs> like, bring him back here, you know, with that, yeah. you know, the caricature of an Italian accent, which I'm always, um, I'm, all, I'm always, I'm, yeah, as an Italian, I don't mind. I think that's funny. <laughs> oh yeah. They definitely play with like the different accents in the show for sure like in terms of nationalities like terms of mm -hmm. like even uh dialects with the country there's all kinds of different dialects and nationalities and voices that pop up in the show <laughs> yeah yeah goofy ringo star-esque accents funny italian cook okay, i'm all for it i don't yeah it's funny <laughs> um but yeah no other illusions i mean there will be other connections um in like further episodes so alien species 559 um which just to go in i guess is this like little blue thing it's like this the little did they show i don't even remember seeing this real fast um it almost looks like a lilo and stitch experiment did they show that when they went out <laughs> it was like a little like do you remember that like a little blue thing with like big eyes yeah i think so but i don't know if i remember in this one was it did it pop up in this episode yeah I think so. It had like a tennis racket. I, I mean, it's saying that, it's, you know, and I'm trying, like, I don't, I don't remember seeing it, but I'm like, I guess it's here. Um, but it's going to show up in an episode called Space Dino, which we'll get nice. to. Um, nice. And then, yeah, additional, like, a, you know, this episode will get referenced again in an episode called Mission to the Sun. So there is going to be illusions that will harken back to this one. I don't know if the Duck Brothers will be returning, but I suppose we will see. Yeah, we will see. <laughs> now, would you like but, to introduce um, our next episode? Yeah, yeah. So the second segment for uh, this episode is surely the medium, uh, which is which is a really fun one. Uh, a lockbox <laughs> left behind by Eustace's late brother Horst um, defies Eustace's every attempt to open it. Uh, through surely the medium, a gypsy Chihuahua, Eustace contacts his brother for the key, despite Horst's warnings. Um, and then as the cursed box releases a grabby terror, Courage pleads with the medium for assistance. <laughs> so a classic tale about greed and um, hubris and, you know, just not listening to experts in this situation, right? Just sort of, oh, yeah. you know, blinded by sure. money in this box. Definitely. It's always used this, this thing is just leading into the greed or like, you know, maybe envy. I'm pretty sure he envies his brother for some whatever reason, you know, is jealous of his brother for being rich. Like apparently his brother was rich or something like that, even though. So <laughs> they're living out in this farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. But I guess the brother was loaded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's this curse in this box where, you know, you're not supposed to open it. Otherwise, you know, it gets a little <laughs> grabby and tries to take you into it. I don't know, which makes me think, like, what is what was, like, Horst into? Like, what was his brother into? Like, what kind of, like, magical, dark stuff was he doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think about Shirley the Medium as a character? I love the design of her character, for real. Like, she's probably one of those ones when I instantly saw the character... 
like the episode i just like recalled it in my mind instantly you know what i mean once i saw the character like i love the voice the delivery the mm-hmm. charismatic way about her and stuff like that. And especially the way she talks about Eustace too. She's like, Oh, the dumb one opened the box, didn't he? Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> well, Cause she, you know, she knows her stuff, right? I mean, that's sort of, you know, and then clearly, you know, we should be listening to experts in the field, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, need the warnings. But I literally laughed out loud when she's trying to call to Horst and just her mouth drops and the phone rings. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought that like, was very clever and really funny. <laughs> I know it kind of reminded me of um recently uh Evil Dead Rise when we had Alyssa Sutherland's character going like that, like on the vinyl record and it was playing through her mouth. Oh, it came yeah. it, it gave me like vibes of that and like it totally like reminded me of it. <laughs> that was really funny. Where was she referencing Shirley? Where the you know <laughs> <laughs> No, it was yeah, really funny. Um, but also just really fun. I, you know, the whole bit of like the house kind of caving in on itself as courage is sort of tying Eustace and Muriel to string. Yep. <laughs> you know, it almost sort of reminded me of a weird version. I don't know if they were referencing poltergeist at all, but like tying the mom and getting her into the other side. It sort of reminded me of like that sort of tether idea. Yeah, I think there's there's something in the, like the safetyness of the rope. Like it comes up a lot in like horror, like in general. It's just mm-hmm. there's something about being connected to something else, you know, even if it's just a, a physical uh like you know, house or something like that, or another person being tethered to them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so yeah, but these fun little nods, like just like that, sort of like these tropes of like the tether and um you know, they like, like, like the people who are, you know, the writers in this show are like, they know their stuff. They sort of know a lot of the tropes and ideas behind um, horror and the, all these different stories. So it's cool just to even just see little, like, even if it's not like a direct reference to something, just like something like that would be brought up in something like a poltergeist is cool to see um, in, in these episodes. <laughs> Definitely. And then what did, what did you think about the overall just like kind of wrap up and solution for this one, you know, kind of the third act? <laughs> as um, we were doing. <laughs> well, I mean, you just got blocked in the box. Um, you know, Shirley comes in and right. And she's, she helps them out. You know, she keeps them, but then you can't help himself. Right. She gets you know, a hundred dollar bill comes up. She takes it for herself. Right. I <laughs> think she's like, that's my payment. <laughs> like, all right. You're good. And he can't help himself, so he gets sucked right back in. Um, and then cheeky courage, you know, he's got the key at the end. So, <laughs> so this sort of keeps the running gag of well, Eustace doesn't die in this episode like he did in Hothead, I think. But um, it's just sort of Eustace just sort of ending in like a very precarious situation. He get, he gets his comeuppance, right? Yeah, and it's like it kind of feels kind of nice to have courage kind of have that like you know the key at the end have that little like i'm on top at this time you know even though we know courage is way too nice to just leave him in there forever you know of course you're gonna let him out (laughs) yeah courage isn't vindictive he's just you know Eustace is a little bit of a bane in his existence at this point right so he's like let me i'm gonna have a little bit of peace while he's swimming in money and he's sort of um oh yeah and then what does he ask to buy the aunt gertrude's recipe from her (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, because he is yeah swimming in just money. It's just like, can you imagine just like an endless dimension just full of money, but you can't really do anything with it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but this is also the first time we get reference um, to uh, Muriel's aunt Gertrude. So she comes up apparently a yeah. lot um, as the show yeah. goes on, um, and a running gag of her using vinegar in her cooking. <laughs> <laughs> i know that's crazy like muriel we end up finding out that she has like a long line of lineage of like family members i mean we do run into some of eustace's or his family members come up but muriel her i think her family members end up coming up more in the show as we'll find out <laughs> right because now this is the second because right? we've had fred and yeah. now we've had uh you know the spirit of aunt gertrude um so i mean quite a colorful <clears throat> group of people she's descended from <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Any other thoughts before we go on to the next episode? No, I'm all cool to move on. On to sure. the third one now, right? Yeah. <laughs> or we'll the next episode. One. 
Yeah, so the next episode, but it's the next segment, we're on to King Ramsey's Curse, which is a pair of cat burglars heist a precious ancient slab and are confronted with the ghost of its ancient Egyptian owner, King Ramses. Torn from their hands by Ramses' cur- the curse, the slab happens upon the farmhouse when Eustace is greedily, unwillingly to part with such a valuable treasure as informed by Professor Firth, the pharaoh's ghost constantly demands the return of the slab and ravages the farmhouse with a triad of plagues. <laughs> so I know this is a very exciting one that you were eager to talk about. <laughs> yeah, well, this is also sort of the one I hear people reference the most when yeah. courage comes up. Like if people will say, return the slab. And this is also <laughs> sort of a, a departure in um, animation style, right? Because this is our first 3D rendered character, I believe. I know it kind of took me like off guard. Like when I saw it again this time, I was like, what? Like I didn't remember it. I was like, did they add that in? And then I was like, no, that that's there. Like that was there, like from back in the day. I just, <laughs> yeah. And it, and it adds like, because I mean, it's not great in terms of like, cause it is early 3D like rendering, but it adds to the creepiness of it, right? Because he just sort of, he has a different texture to him. He did look, just looks like he doesn't belong there. And it just sort of adds, it's almost like, um, it's only, I, I would relate it to sort of that uncanny valley, right? When someone tries to recreate a human image, but it's not quite right. Yeah. This is sort of like that, but he doesn't quite match everyone else. Yeah, he sticks out in like an awkward, unusual way, almost a three-dimensional, like you said, way from the background and everything else. But like I said, it definitely adds to the creepy factor for sure. And I love the the voice and stuff. So this one's cool because it harkens back to, like I said, old school mummy movies, black and white movies, or even those horror movies that we love where it's like somebody finds a token or a book and there's something they're not supposed to have, you know what I mean? And they end up keeping it and then they're cursed. So this has a lot of cool fun, like horror nods in it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of like the, the plagues <laughs> or like, the... <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was really cool. It definitely reminded me of something. And like, I know it's like biblical, like, you know, there's a lot of terms you can go back to the biblical thing where how's that, but I love the fact that it just happens, encourages reaction and stuff. And especially just the rain inside, it's just constantly raining. Like me, for me, I'm just one of those people like water damage. That's not the best thing in the world. Like that'll mess up anything. People don't know. It's just, it's really bad. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I, I laughed at that song. Like the King Ramsey's songs as being yeah. one of the plagues is very funny. <laughs> or the curses rather. Um, yeah. But so I don't know if it's a, so there's a couple of nods here um, from other episodes. So when courage turns into a boat, there's a sailor version of the Freaky Fred song, like Freaky Fred's theme. It's a nice. revamped version, like a sailor <laughs> version. Um, so that gets played. Um, and then there's a couple of other little music things. Um, so, oh, well, uh, I guess there's a piece of music that it, I don't know if it's a direct tie in, but Kanye West actually uses, I guess, has a sampling of music that was scored and it actually shows up in one of his songs from here wow <laughs> that is in there um but so there's other references. No, one, hmm? no one could ever argue that courage has not broken the walls of pop culture <laughs> exactly immortalized <laughs> in music um but yeah i mean there's also direct ties to so we get references to christmas carol right just in the way that ramsey says you will be visited by three curses Instead of three ghosts, you know, the way that he words it is very morally. Um, And then what other little tidbits I had. Yeah, um, people, you know, it's been voted as one of the scariest episodes of the series. And yeah, and there's also going to be little references in episodes coming up. Um, Back to this one, even though King Ramses doesn't show up again. But we will see uh, Professor Frith show up again. Yeah, yeah, Professor. I remember when he popped up. I was like, I know he's gonna be a reoccurring one. And I just like, like I said, the aesthetic of the whole episode and too, like the slab, the cat burglars, like in the beginning and stuff. Mm-hmm. When and all, you know, all the stuff in it is just, like I said, very horror, horror tropish. 
like the slab falls, just happens to fall in the farmhouse area and gets buried there. That's where they want to bury it. You know, courage finds it and stuff like that. So, you know, all those kind of things is just callbacks to certain like kind of horror movies that we love. And I think I would probably agree with most people that this is probably one of the creepiest episodes that we've had so far, for sure. Yeah, one of the creepiest, but also some of the funniest, too. I think there's some really like funny moments in it, like like the song. Um, yeah. You know, I, I was definitely cracking up to that. And then like there's some other little bits I'm trying to remember. I don't know if it's just, oh yeah i mean just the idea like Eustace trying to sell the slab <laughs> um, and just being like what what else you got for me or what else you're gonna <laughs> yeah <laughs> the thing he keeps saying to everybody and, and what else you got for me <laughs> i know because he ends up finding out what it's worth like or it's worth a million or something like that worth a million dollars like some like an astronomical amount of money compared to the yeah. 25 dollars and a gift certificate in our previous you know episode that he was going crazy right. for. right what was the, yeah what, what was it that he was trying to sell for 25 bucks oh he was trying oh that one was the bigfoot remember he was trying to i think that was bigfoot. the big for 25 yeah. bucks and a gift certificate yeah <laughs> that's right that's right it's a little more substantial Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and you know, another little fun fact: this was also a featured episode, so maybe this is all one episode that people saw a lot of because this was featured on the VHS for Scooby Doo and the Alien Invaders. That's true. That's true. And I love that this one uh, has a lot of connections with Hanna Barbera because I think the production <laughs> company it's like a sisterhood company to Courage the Cowardly Dog, so a lot of it has to do with that that's why they put it on a lot of scooby-doo well you movie. know we're gonna have to cover the movie yeah <laughs> Once we're done with the, show, it's the scooby meets courage movie i mean yes it's common yeah i was gonna propose <laughs> it we, i mean we got four seasons to get through but you know we probably are gonna have to cover it <laughs> oh yeah definitely that'll be like a fun we could actually make that like a fun live stream thing that would be a really fun one <laughs> well, okay it's just sort of like the finale to yeah, well, and there was also a there's a seven minute. This is just a, a little bit of a tangent. There's like a seven or eight minute pilot for a CG reboot out on YouTube. I don't know if you saw that. I don't think they're, so. I, I don't they were know. trying to get it back go, and going around like 2014, um, but they I guess they just turned. You know, they just they passed on it. Um, but I guess there was like sort of test footage as to like what they were thinking about doing. So there's like okay. a seven or eight minute segment out there. That's cool. Yeah. So we could tap kind of almost like I don't know, almost like a fan film, like a little mini fan film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, like, like like how we talked about last week, how like all those people, those fans reanimated for Freaky Fred. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, no, that you know, this is this is a this is a solid one, um, yeah. for sure. Uh yeah, you know, it's always I love that we sort of keep getting this like back and forth of like we get like something that's definitely horror and then we get something that's a little more goofy and they tend to they volley back and forth pretty well yeah in terms of tone and it tends to be like you get a little more like they're both they're all funny but you get like a little more serious segment and then you usually get a little sillier segment yeah this one is definitely a memorable one for sure no yeah. <laughs> but Would you uh, like to introduce our next one steve oh yeah so the speaking of the sillier ones, this is one of the <laughs> sillier ones. Um, the clutching foot. A fungus on Eustace's foot gains sentience and consumes him whole, becoming a quintet of old-fashioned mobsters. Uh, with his beloved Muriel threatened by the crushing extortion of the infectious gangsters, courage races for a cure. So this was not only a sillier one, this was a bit of a gross one. This was, I mean, I think this is as close as some of the body horror we're going to get in the show. Oh, yeah. Just, this one. It was gross. Like, oh, yeah. This one will make you kind of like quiver a little bit or make your skin crawl. There's like certain moments, especially when we get into the, the third act, when we find out the solution to it. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, like, like, it had yeah. gagging, <laughs> like, right. Like at the beginning, right. He's got this fungus and then Muriel's trying to cure it with a cactus. I'm like, <laughs> this is so cool. Hey, what did you, what did you think overall? 
I think what's funny is that leads into the body horror. I think the design of the fungus, the colorization, like the purple and the greens. And yeah. like you said, as it gains sentient and it starts to grow more and more, it's just hilarious. Like the adding of the mobsters thing, I thought was very, that's where we get into the very campy, very silly. Like, you know, we were kind of at just a horror body horror thing. And then they add in the whole silly mobsters voice, you know, the different faces and the voices. And yeah, I was like, Maybe. <laughs> it in, just I'm reminded in, me in, of yeah those like old cartoons and the mobsters that smoke the big cigars and have the hats <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i love it um but yeah i mean you know as even for being one of the sillier ones um there are definitely some references throughout um so just a little fun fact this is the first time muriel actually knows about the monster from the get-go there's oh, no sort huh. of like surprise situation yeah. sort of season. And she's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. Um, and then, so I'm just going to read this little snippet because it, it, it's, it, it's a mouthful, but so the engine on the train that ends up blowing up is four, eight, zero or an American Macedon type steam lo locomotive. Um, and then, so this is a very common train from like the 1830s to about the 1920s. Um, and so these are the trains that you would often see in a lot of those gangster sort of movies or stories, like the like any period piece. Um, so they're really kind of pulling from it. Um, and then Mr. Vindaloo is mentioned by Eustace when he refuses to go to the hospital. Um, he wouldn't appear till he makes his second appearance. So there's a reference to a common character as well. Um, nice. But the name reference, Big Toe, is a direct reference to The Clutching Hand. It's a 1934 novel by Arthur Reeve. Nice. Oh, see, there's a lot of, like, that's what I mean. Like, I think the writers, the creators, they really know, like said, they knew exactly what they were trying to write and, like, create with some of these stories and definitely had certain ideas and homages that they had when they were coming up with some of these, you know, ideas for the season, for sure. Mm -hmm. But what did you... Did you find the computer as funny as I did in this one, though? I found the the, the the bits with the computer, and he's, like, analyzing the fungus. Oh, yeah, that's what's cool. It's like, we, for a while there, actually, we went a couple episodes without the, or a couple segments without the computer, and, like, this yeah. is the first one where the computer popped up again, and, yeah, how he analyzes the, ugh, that was hilarious, like, like and I the guess solution. That, like, the computer seems to be this all-knowing AI tech that somehow existed in 2000. Uh or 99 or whatever <laughs> yeah but um yeah it, you know i like that they don't use it in every episode because that's sort of like an easy yeah. like what's the solution let's just type it in and find out right yeah but i love that he's like the only cure is dog saliva um uh, and then he's like you better work, work up a good drool big boy or something he says something <laughs> like, 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 like big boy or how do i have the quote um no, I don't have the exact <laughs> quote, but yeah, no, it's like, yeah, like good boy, big boy, or something like just something so ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it was just that was probably the, the moment that got me to yeah, cringe and got me all like, Ugh, like just the solution, like the, the animation style of like courage, like licking and stuff, and the slobber and everything was just like what really got me. <laughs> oh, it's so nasty. Um, so he's licking this fungus, and then I guess it shrinks, and then Eustace comes out of this giant foot. Um, yeah. and, then, and, the, and then it ends with a fungus transferring to his tongue. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, of course. Like, if you're going to lick the fungus that much, how would it not? You're like, it has to. <laughs> I mean, if the cure was going to be dog saliva, maybe you should have like a like 23 in me when you got to spit into the thing, you know? Maybe you should have just oh, spit yeah. into a vial. <laughs> and lathered that on. Maybe that would have been the... <laughs> oh, yeah, for real. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's the... Anything else on the clutching foot? That's all I got on probably the grossest episode we've had so far. <laughs> yeah, I would probably agree. That was definitely the closest one for sure. Or grossest one. Ugh, like that you said. <laughs> Body horror definitely on the top of the list for this one. <laughs> I, mean, I think you got our next one. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let's bring that up real quick. So we got on next. We are the 
Hunchback of Nowhere, a hideous yet kind-hearted hunchback, seeks refuge from the cold and rainy night. Spoomed by Eustace, he hides away in the barn where courage finds and befriends him. Eustace, jealous of the attention that his family gives to the guest, uh, berates and belittles him until the hunchback shows Eustace what true ugliness really is. So this one definitely, I think, this one, I like the fact that it probably right off the bat, we knew it wasn't a villain character. We kind of already knew Eustace was going to be our main villain in this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You no, know, because I think we're, I think it really opens up with the hunchback, right? I don't think we start with courage and Eustace, yeah. and Mira, right? Um, he's just getting turned away from house to house. And you, you automatically, you feel bad for this little guy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because the quotes and like just the lines that are coming from these characters, it's so rude. And you're just like, oh, wow. Well, like he's because he gives off such a calm, like nice vibe. Like, you know, he just is very weird looking, you know, he's awkward looking. That's all. <laughs> That's right. But it's just like they all scream or they're all like <laughs> ugly. <laughs> it's it's sad. It's, it's very funny the way they deliver it, but it is very sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he, yeah, but he comes across and it's funny. It's like, uh, you know, he, startles courage at first but you know courage like immediately warms up to him after Eustace sort of turns him away right when he find his, finds him in the barn yeah he's not really freaked out at, by him at all you know and which is funny enough because courage i guess like the point is like courage can sort of i guess sense goodness in people right so he may be like a scaredy cat but like he's not you know he may be startled he sort of immediately realizes like there's no threat here he's just playing oh, yeah. with his little bells <laughs> oh yeah that was so cute that was like i saw that and i was like instantly i wanted like maybe like a pop here or like little figures of him and them two together with the bells like when they're dressed up and everything how they're performing for mario <laughs> yeah i mean i love that we i mean obviously i mean it's a, a reference to hunchback of notre dame and then the ringing yeah. of the bell and all that but they just sort of make it this cute little version of it he just travels with bells because he likes the sound of them <laughs> Oh, yeah. And that's true, because we think about it as like the old school Hunchback of Notre Dame. Like you could actually consider that as, you know, kind of almost like a horror movie or a creature type, like, you know, thing. So that's what's really cool is that this show, like the writers, they find a way to pull even some of the lightest horror and like bring it to life. And this one yeah. is a very cute way to tackle, you know, bullying and belittling and stuff. How, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. You know what I mean? You can befriend anybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was very much, I would say, like a cousin to the Shadow episode, right? That's In true, terms yeah. of like, or even like the um, the Bigfoot one, right? It's sort of the, <clears throat> you know, the monster is people like Eustace, yeah. right? Who refuse to look deeper than what's out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I loved the the little back and forth at the at the breakfast table. Where he, where he just is like oh, yeah. him and encourages is like under the table feeding him the notes of what yeah, to say. Yeah, and he's like writing it and he's like, oh, you're, you're ball. You're, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the only comeback that Courage has. <laughs> like, oh, why are you ball? <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing you can think of to say, but Courage is under there like laughing to himself. <laughs> oh, yeah. He yeah. just must have been so proud of his hair. Like, he must have had the most luscious hair like he thought he did he thought he did when he was younger <laughs> that seems to be the running thing right i mean he you know he went as far as to become a little pyro head person <laughs> you <Yep. laughs> <laughs> to get it back but uh yeah no that little yeah that little back and forth i thought was really cute and funny um and then obviously them playing together and i was genuinely sad when they had a part ways at the end yeah that's true yeah it's definitely it's, it kind of sucks because it's like there are some characters that i wish would stick around and like populate nowhere you know what i mean like maybe he would eventually have neighbors or some of these people would stick around or something like that <laughs> yeah i mean we'll see you know re reoccurring characters at some point but it would be nice like i think to get more i mean i do love these three you know as, as clear antagonists within eustace then you have muriel and you know courage like the three work as a trio but it would sort of be nice to have, you know, I guess the idea is they're really in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> I guess it's sort of the <laughs> purpose if they got a neighbor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what's kind of interesting is like they do live in the middle of nowhere. And maybe that is why, because they live in such an obscure location. That's why all the weirdest things happen out there. You know what I mean? And it's mm -hmm. kind of that one saying like, 
does do you really does it really make a sound like when a tree falls and no one's there you know kind of thing is really what's going on to them actually happening (laughs) yeah yeah you know i'd be curious if there's any sort of hints as to sort of a bigger situation i mean i i don't i you know i'm not expecting it this is pre way 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 pre mcu not everything needs to be connected Uh, (laughs) i was thinking more in the way of like you know how like in an adventure time they sort of have little hints as to like what what is actually happening or like what the world was before or what you know even though they don't explicitly talk about it I'd, i'd be curious if there were little hints as to what's going on behind like nowhere Oh, I would love to. That's what I want to do. Hopefully we'll find out more about that or maybe even come up with our own things, even if it's just our own ideas, because there's certain things, even with like Scooby-Doo, some people say that the reason like certain, the reason they live in their van is because of, you know, inflation and the bad economy and everything Mm -hmm. and the economy is going through a depression. That's why the Scooby-Doo gang lives in a van. All the villains, all their plots have to do with property or money or trying to squander money. So it's yeah. like there's weird things that you kind of pick up when you watch the shows and stuff and you get more in depth with them. <laughs> well, that's fair. I mean, what was going on in the 60s? You know, I'm trying, like, what was, yeah, wasn't there stuff I guess what to see? You know, I guess there's a little bit more of like a history deep dive you almost have to do. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you know? But it's cool, yeah. But uh, no, but I really like this one. I thought it was really sweet. I'm pretty sure this is the only appearance of um, the Hunchback. The Hunchback, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to find if he his own. I don't think he has his own page. That's okay. Yeah, I think this is our only appearance. <laughs> That's okay. On to another kind of wild character, though. Would you like to introduce our yes, our last segment of the night? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the gods must be goosey. So we had our serious <laughs> episode. Now we definitely have our real silly episode here. A divine goose falls in love with a portly mirror as he beckons her to a paradise above. Courage battles the heavenly gander for his irreplaceable odor. Um this was a fun one, though. I mean, it's, it's, yes, it was silly, but it, it was pretty fun. This almost, this felt like classic Hanna Barbera. It felt, um, even though it was not Hanna Barbera, but like, like Warner Brothers. This almost had a little bit yeah. of like a Looney Tunes vibe to it, like this like God Goose God ca- character. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if this is. I think this is the only appearance too. Yeah, him. I don't remember him. Yeah, like uh, coming up again. Yeah, but it was kind of but funny that he just sort of like, like instantly falls in love with her. <laughs> instantly falls in love. Well, it's almost like he falls in love with her, but then he sort of second guesses it. Then he's like, "Why not?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do you? Do you not? You're kind of just doing it because you want to. I don't know. Um, but then we sort of see courage. As much as he doesn't like Eustace. He wants Eustace and Muriel to stay together. I mean, I almost like in, if I was in Courage's shoes, I'm, I almost would have like wanted Muriel to sort of move on from Eustace. <laughs> Maybe not. I know, like this God, but yeah, because well, I mean, there's a lot of things that this God can give her that yeah, Eustace can never give her. Like for real, like he's got obviously yeah. a body, even though you know it's a goose body. He's got a definitely more physique for sure. That was <laughs> he's able to make flowers pop up out of nowhere and spring mm-hmm. gardens out of nothing. So, but yeah, it's kind of cute to see Courage really fight for their love because I think he knows deep down, you know, Mariel is like one of those ladies who loves Eustace no matter mm-hmm. what, even though he's kind of a rude disgusting human most of the time you know she's the edith to his archie bunker i suppose if we're gonna do a sitcom <laughs> reference you know that's sort of how i see these two you know you, you yeah. have like someone who's like no I mean, have you have you you've seen all in the family yeah i've seen all in the family yeah i've yeah, seen yeah. some of that one yeah yeah i mean <laughs> it's just sort of like how you know someone as sweet as the, you know this person how are you with this like absolute like love <laughs> of a person um but that's a lot of sitcom couples, actually. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. But then, you know, so he's like singing to her. And I and I love that. I did find it funny where the, with the song that the Goose God was singing, he just sort of took the same theme and just sort of changed the words to Eustace and Meryl. <laughs> it was cute, though. But I mean, overall, what did you think? 
I thought it was cute that Muriel, like she and almost entertains the idea of being with the goose, but she knows she's not going to go with him. She knows she's going to stay with Eustace and Courage because that's her home. That's who she loves. But I love the fact that she relishes in the attention that she gets from the goose god. I think it's really cute. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know, it's 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 really this is a sort of a sweet one. I would say, you know, if this how we call it, a character development episode. But this is really very much about the characters here and like their relationships and like why they're sort of this unit. Oh yeah, that's just true too. It's like now that you said that, I thought about that as this is probably I was gonna say, like, out of all the episodes we've watched of the ones on this list, this was my least favorite. But after you saying that, it is cool to look at it like from that perspective, because this is probably the most character building we got between why Mariel's there. She loves them. We know courage fights for their love you know what i mean and eustace just being the dumb the dumbass who just ignores her doesn't know what he has but you know courage is yeah. trying to bonk him on the head like remind him and honk the horn you know <laughs> right right uh so some references here if we want to dive into this, just some of like the, the little fun stuff so Ooh. the episode title the gods must be goosey is a reference to a south African comedy called The Gods Must Be Crazy. Um, wow. And then the, well, obviously, the, the song that uh, The Gods sings to Muriel is uh, Ride of the Valkyries. If you, know, if you don't know that piece, it's very, <laughs> I think everyone knows that piece at this point. I imagine yeah. if not, you know, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, so the, the guess is, so this episode might be and may be influenced by the Greek myth of Zeus and Nemesis, where a nemesis turned into a goose to avoid Zeus's affections. Um, but Zeus uh, becomes a swan in order to pursue her. So sort of taking the trope of like a goose god form and like sort of obviously making it the courage version of it. But yeah, uh, there are gooses, geese, geese, gooses, geeses. <laughs> mythology yeah that's what's cool too like i love the fact that this one has like you said that roman kind of mythology thing going on and stuff gods and mm -hmm. goddesses and everything and that's what's really fun is like courage it's it plays with a lot of fantasy type stuff mythos you know horror like all those elements that are involved in a lot of these episodes that we talk about yeah oh and then this is the first time I think the only time other than like the original pilot and the opening credits where Eustace uses that mask to scare courage. Oh, the Kabuki mask. Yeah. The mm -hmm. that Kabuki mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's the first non-pilot episode where he uses that. Um, and this is the first time courage calls Eustace by his name. Like there's wow. like, yeah, I guess like when he's actually <laughs> talking to him, he calls him Eustace. And uh, I guess the first time <laughs> So, I know, but we know Curtis can talk, but I, like, I, I didn't catch that. I saw that. That's I found that all online. So. <laughs> <clears throat> that's fun. Yeah. yeah Summarizing kinda, it all here for you guys. Yes, that's why we're doing this. So we can bring up all these fun little tidbits and fun things to go away that go along with these episodes. And hopefully you are all tagging along too and watching this along on HBO Max. That is where we are streaming all these episodes and where you can check these out and everything. And be sure to like and subscribe and all that jazz because that's how you're going to stay tuned with us going along every Wednesday. So I'm going to try to have these out every other Wednesday. I mean, my bad, every Wednesday, every other Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a lot of cars. Yeah, we could do it, but it's a lot of courage. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, 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 like I said, it's exciting to go through the show. That's what was a fun thing, too, going through the Scooby-Doo when I did that. It's mm -hmm. just like really like calling back to bringing back to those times because I've noticed that, too, is like I've gotten older. I love going back to nostalgia stuff because I like watching what I lo love, you know what I mean, or what I know I like. It's cool to try new stuff every now and then, but I love watching the old school stuff that you know you like for sure <laughs> yeah absolutely and i still need to dive into those scooby-doo episodes i i saved all of your top series so that way i could start watching at least the, the ones that you really loved so that was that's sort of my plan is to do like the best of the best and then i'll watch the other ones 
Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, it's like, and like that's what we're doing this one now. Maybe possibly too after we do this, we'll be able to you know, on that live. We'll be able to do the movie or even uh, rank the seasons and stuff like that. Talk about which ones are. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Just to do like a seasons look back, favorite villains, favorite moments, funniest moments, all that kind of. Oh yeah, because like I'm pretty sure right now as it stands, like I've really enjoyed this season. This season has a lot of really good strong first episodes and you know really introducing us to these characters in this universe there's a lot of really good first you know six episodes that we've talked about so far well i'm surprised how front-loaded this show is because i'm like how many other villains do we have to go through because i'm like we've already gotten the slab we've gotten freaky fred i'm like does everyone just think about these first handful of villains are the rest of the villains not as memorable i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know we're gonna get like some of the aliens, like the some of the alien duck twins or something like that, and then we got a couple monster creature flick episodes coming up and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember any other iconic ones off the top of my head, but not really calling back to it. But yeah, I think yeah. this was a very strong first season. I think what we're gonna find out is like not, the other seasons might not be as bad or anything, but they this first season has a lot of good stuff in it. But you know what? Also, not to prolong the episode, but too much longer. I know you 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 were giving oh, no. the whole rap spiel, and then oh, no, no. <laughs> but I wonder also because when this show hits, right, it hits for people of a certain age, right? So ninety nine, two thousand, right? So middle elementary school, middle school, the people of that time, right? And then it's like by the time you're four years in, those people have sort of those kids have kind of grown up, and kids move on to things pretty quickly. So I wonder if that's just sort of a, a just a sign of Three, that's why sort of Nickelodeon shows or Disney shows only allow their shows to go three seasons because they know that kids move fast. So yeah. it's like you have a show for three years. All right. New kid, new generation came up three more seasons of something else. You know, um, that's sort of what they that's why like you look at like like Hannah Montana, even Stevens, any of those like Disney Channel shows. They're only like three or four seasons. Yeah, yeah. I think so, it's the anyway. one thing. Yeah. You either got to find a way, like you said, to either go to go more seasons, you have to find a way to evolve, like with your audience and like maturity and stuff like that, which I'm not that, positive. or be good or be relevant enough that new kids are going to want to hop on, That's even true. if they didn't watch from the time it started. Like when you look at SpongeBob, I mean, that show, I can't believe that show's still on. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was eight when that show came out. I am 33 with a child right now. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's in, that is insane to me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Or even uh, like Blues Blues Clues is still going on too, right? Yeah, Blues well, Clues, Blues Clues ended and had a hiatus, like a long hiatus. Yeah. And then my son's generation now, right? right our kids, because that that was sort of when it came back with Josh. But like, yeah, it wasn't going on until Steve to Josh. It was like Steve Joe. It got canceled, and then Josh years later. <laughs> but oh, that's a format that. We need more shows like that for the little ones. My son only like he can't get into cartoons yet because he's not even two yet. But like he need like we need more because the kid the adults talk to the camera. We don't have a lot of shows yeah. like that, you know. That's true. Um, you know, so there's a lot of but anyway, we're way we're, we're way off from courage now. We just went <laughs> on. <off the rails. laughs> it's all good, yeah. So it's like we keep it all with the cartoon. Like everybody knows, like I said with with our you know my channel. I watch a lot of cartoons and a lot of that young adult stuff. You know, we got to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, I just keep it alive. Um, but yeah, no, I can't wait. I can't wait to see because now, because now I'm like thinking, like, all right, these are the big ones that I remember. These villains. Now I'm like, now I'm waiting to see like these episodes that we watch. Now, are, is it going to jog my memory, or am I going to? Yeah. It's almost going to be like I'm watching some of these for the first time now because now, <laughs> I'm like, <"Wow>, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Do we have a? Did you have the episode list pulled up for the next ones? Did you want to talk about those? Maybe rattle off with our next six yeah. segments. Yeah. So we have. So right. So just to kind of go back that. So HBO Max has um, a different list than. Yeah. So this is in, off uh, Wikipedia. If you people go to Wikipedia, they do have a different order of some of the shows and where they pop up and everything. So yeah, we're yeah. going off of it. So. We're going off of Mac, so I'm pretty sure we have um, Queen of the Black Puddle. Um, everyone wants to direct, so a little bit of a movie. Um, <laughs> so there's a character in that one, actually, I'm very excited, called Benton Tarantella. So clear Tarantino nice. reference. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's gonna be some funny. Be, we'll, we're gonna see it. Definitely being movie people. I'm gonna. I'm looking for those inside jokes. Um, the snowman cometh. So X, the X Men cometh. Right. There's gonna be a lot of sort of references there. Precious, wonderful, adorable, lovable duckling. A lot of duck stuff. <laughs> <laughs> in the yeah, show, popular really. ducks, geese, gooses. <laughs> um, and I think it's heads of beef and club cats. Well, I think now we're going to be going back to the initial episode one. I think I remember seeing that, um, which is yeah. Night at Cats Motel, Cajun Granny Stew, which sort of kind of go all out of order. But those are a handful of the episodes we're going to be covering for next week. Definitely. So there you go, everybody. A lot of fun stuff coming up. Hope you all are staying tuned to the channel. Like I said, like, subscribe, all our links, social links, all that stuff will be down below in the description so you can find us and follow along. And we appreciate all this, everybody coming to join us in nowhere to tag along and talk about Courage the Cowardly Dog. Be sure to like, like I said, and subscribe. And have a safe and happy day, y'all. Peace out.